Welcome to another one of our garage framing videos and in this one here I will not be starting from the finished product because in one of our previous videos I have already made a version of that. You can always go watch that one. However in this particular one here I have made some changes to the floor framing and that would include moving this beam over. This beam was located over here and helped to transfer the load from the ridge through a post down to this beam when it was over here. And now since I moved it, I will need to add a doubler here to transfer the load from the doublers around the stairwell and the stairs. And of course we will need some double studs and a post. This post here will have a footing underneath it. Now keep in mind that your engineer might want to beef up the footing here in the same way that we have over here and in the front. So here we have a footing that's going to be a little larger on both sides of the garage because we're going to be transferring the load with a large beam above the garage header. And another change that I made was that I brought the beam and the doubler out to get full bearing on the top plates. And that would look something like this if we removed the rim joist, providing you with another option that you might want to use when building your garage. And these two footings are the same in the other video where we have one supporting the floor beam here and the other supporting the ridge beam. Next up, let's go ahead and take a look at it from the bottom so we can see where all of our additional footings are. And of course, how the floor joist might be laid out. 12 inches on center with a structural floor beam supporting the roof ridge beam. And of course, our doubler here that's supporting this beam this beam and the stairs. And then our joists switch from 12 inches on center to 16 inches on center because the span is now a little smaller than this one here. Next up, let's go ahead and add the floor sheathing and then put the ground back into the picture. I know sometimes I like to have the ground in here. And of course, sometimes it messes up the video. Next up, let's go ahead and install the rake walls. And you can see here where the post is going to be supporting the ridge. And again, more information on that in the other video. And of course, after we have installed these walls, we can go ahead and install the two smaller walls on each side that our hips will be sitting on. Another view of it there. Next up, let's go ahead and install our ridge beam along with the post in the center to provide you with an example of why we installed this beam here. And in the other video, this post sat over here somewhere. And again, I'm trying to provide you with more ways to build a variety of different garages. And don't forget, if you don't want this post here, you can usually install a larger ridge beam. And I will try to provide you with an example of that in a future video. Next up, let's go ahead and install our rafters. These are going to be our common rafters. And we will notch for our lookouts here. And these are going to be the only common rafters we're going to have in this video. The rest of them will be shaped for the dormers. And to make our dormers work, we are going to need to install some hip beams here. And they will need to be shaped on the bottom and cut to the precise height so that they line up and provide us with a way to plane this side of the roof in along with the other sections of the roof framing. Now even though I'm not going to provide you with step-by-step -step details on how to assemble this building, if you need more information, let me know in the comment area. And if I get enough people who want to know more about this, then I will definitely make another video. Because one of the hardest things you're going to do on this project will be to figure out the length of the hips and how to position them correctly. Next up, let's go ahead and install our first fill rafters. And if everything is positioned correctly, then this rafter here should be the same as this one, except the bottom cut will be reversed. And that would go for this entire section here. And you can see here why the beams need to be at a specific height so that we create a nice flat surface here. And I'm not about to suggest this is going to be an easy project to build. However, I think I can suggest that it is going to be a nice looking building. 
Now I didn't frame these walls like I did here. I didn't put a top plate on here. And of course, as you guessed it, the reason for that would be to provide you with another way to build something like this. And hopefully if you have positioned everything correctly, you're going to have a nice straight ridge and a flat surface here, a nice plane. And you can see just exactly how far the rafters need to be held up so that the roof sheathing will die into the center of the hip. Another thing that might be a little difficult to figure out. However, once you figure it out, the height should be exactly the same on all of your fill rafters or jack rafters, as we used to call them. And of course, the front gable rafters will just barely be sitting on top of the wall here. And that will be the same on the other side. And if it isn't for whatever reason, and you run into a situation where this measurement here is a little longer or a little smaller, don't beat yourself up. It's not going to be the end of the world. However, it is going to provide you with your first clue to start double checking some of your measurements to figure out where the problem is. Next up, let's go ahead and install our wall here and we're going to have two windows here along with two shaped rake windows up here and this is a common detail used by architects for gable roofs or dormers like we're looking at here and you can see where we have a 2x4 that's running from the bottom of the ridge all the way down to the framing plate to provide additional structural support for the ridge and of course we have our ceiling backing or our drywall backing for the ceiling. Take a look at the lower section here. And this is another common method of construction here. And another thing you can do, and this might be before or after, will be to add some support studs underneath the hip or a post, whatever you or your engineer feel will work the best. And of course, a view from the inside of our dormer. And even though I'm referring to this as a dormer or a large dormer, this could actually be referred to as a gable end wall or a building with four gables, the garage with four gables. Next up, let's go ahead and install our fascia board. And you can see here where the fascia board is going to be cut, we're going to have a gap here between the bottom of the fascia board and the top of the sheathing, maybe about an inch. However, that gap will need to be larger if you're going to use tile or a thicker roofing material. And of course, our lookouts that will be supporting the fascia board. Now, I had a problem here that I think could be solved by attaching this end of the fascia board to the framing. Otherwise, we're not going to have a strong connection here. And if that's the case, you might need to install a lookout in this area here. If you want to cut this back a little further and do not want to connect it to the wall, sometimes we don't want to connect it to the wall because we want our stucco siding or brick to run behind the fascia board and not around it. So another thing to consider when you are going to be building something like this. And believe it or not, we are approaching the end of the video. So let's go ahead and install our roof sheathing. And I'm only going to install it on one side here and let you use your imagination to figure out what the other side is going to look like. Or should I say it's not going to be a problem to use your imagination because this is going to look exactly the same as the other side. And for those of you who have watched enough of my videos, if you have any questions or require additional information about building something like this, then make sure that you provide those details in the video comment section.